And right now, here's your host of Helping Seniors of Brevard, Joe Steckler. Hi, Joe. Hi, John, and thank you all for listening today. You know, when we talk about what we're going to do for a radio show or or what I'm going to write in my column for Hometown News, it goes to uh, uh, magazines like the Tatler and uh, uh, the... uh, the Spanish newspaper, the black newspaper, and several other places, including, most importantly, Senior Scene Magazine. I, I talk to my, my, my co-host a lot on this, with, which is Kerry Fink, folks. It's Kerry Fink of TYG Media, and he's our media director for uh, Helping Seniors. I, I have to tell you that the... Um, all the social media that were out there on, on the internet on the day is really as a result of, of Kerry. It's his knowledge of radio and all that we're doing is getting us on these um, different media sources. That, and I know it's working because I've had uh, people call me or send me an email and say, Joe, how can we help? And that's really encouraging me to, because... Brittany Mulligan of Hometown News wrote an article last week in Hometown News um, wherein she touted and talked about uh, the Senior Resource Alliance. And I had to read that two or three times to see what she was talking about. And I think a lot of it goes to leadership. And uh, Gary and I have talked all the time about the persons, whether it be male or female, is the head of these organizations depends a lot on how they think and how hard they're willing to push themselves and their staff to do things. Now, for years, I've told people, you listeners, and I'm talking a little bit longer than I knew today because this is something I know and really nobody else does because it's been... Uh, Something that I paid attention to for, oh, now, I guess, nigh on 23 years. That's a long time, folks, because it's your money that I'm talking about. And the Senior Resource Alliance is composed of Orange, Osceola, Seminole, and Rivard counties. And I don't know how many millions they get to disseminate, distribute to uh, each of the four counties, but uh, a couple of those things that, that that are important to us and to me to get out to you, the listener, because so many of you are senior citizens, that uh, these monies fund programs like the Alzheimer's program, the respite programs, some of their transportation programs, and some of these new food programs, uh, the Pearl program, I don't know that much about it, but there's a number you can call. And if you look at that Hometown News article, you'll see the number. It's a 407 number. And right now, for the life of me, I can't think of it. I didn't write it down. But if you get on the Internet and look at our resource lines, you'll get that phone number. And, folks, that's a starting place for everything that you think you might need. And let's talk about the activities of, of daily living. And carry out, you can break in any time that you want to add something. Please feel free to do that. Well, I was just going to say, you know, on last week's radio show where we had uh, Bill Johnson, our board-certified elder law attorney, who was our guest, you may remember, we spent some time uh, because he wanted to talk about long-term care planning. It was really interesting because he was talking about Medicaid planning, uh, and getting set, and you remember, he actually went through and gave us the definition of what those um, uh, activities of daily living are, and if uh, and it was it was pretty impressive. He just was able to sit here and tick them off one, two, three, four, five. That program, by the way, is available on helpingseniorsofbrevard.org, so you can go back and always pull up any of the radio shows, the TV shows, any of that is all there. But that was interesting when he was talking about that, and then he was talking about the requirements for qualifying for Medicaid support based on where you stood in terms of how many of those activities of daily living you could manage yourself. Well, yeah, but the, the, the point I'm trying to make, Harry, is that 
if somebody wants to get on a waiting list for services provided by the state, there's only one way you can do that. Mm-hmm. You have to call this organization called the Senior Resource Alliance. It's a 407 number. Carrie's trying to find it now. Mm-hmm. But that's the starting point. If you don't get in with them so they can ask you questions, and what they're going to do is ask you questions about the person that you're trying to get help for. Do they need help showering? Do they need help dressing? Do they need help getting out of bed? Do they need help eating? Do they help showering? Uh, there's about five or six important things, and the more things you qualify for, that'll move you to the head of the list. And what you try to do is get the person that's the most affected, and I think Carrie's got a number in just a minute. Yeah. Get, go ahead and get the number, Carrie. I was going to say, the number that's coming up here is area code 407-514-1800. So it's 407-514-1800. And you're right. That's what uh, is that that is the place you have to begin to even get onto that uh, uh, Medicaid waiting list. Yeah. And here's the thing I want you to understand why they, knowing this is so important. Because you might not think about this, but just last night, I, we had a call in our house from somebody that is going to need this kind of help. Call us at home. And the sad part about it is that, let's say a person has five activities of daily living they need help with. That'll push them ahead of a person that has four or three or two or only just one. But that one, two, or three might be something that's more important than this person with four or five. But they don't have the same number. And that higher number moves you ahead on a waiting list. And Bill told you and I told you that there are roughly 52,000 people on that doggone waiting list. Mm -hmm. And folks, that number has been in that same area ever since I've been doing this radio show going back to uh, the 1990s. That's terrible. We have not managed to be effective in helping people that need help. And in her article, Brittany talked, had talked with this new director of the Senior Resource Alliance. And this, this new director, her name is Carla. She, Carla Radke, I think that's it. Uh, she, and I want to talk to her. But she had talked about how uh, we're going to do things better. Yes, I've heard that for a long time. So at 4.51 yesterday, I called that number, and I'm going to tell you, I almost fell out of my chair because I got a person. And I talked to him. <laughs> and this person I talked to was extremely knowledgeable. She answered every question I asked her, or she looked up someplace and got that answer. And then I leveled with her, and I told her who I was. And we had a good chat. But instead of having just one or two people answer the phone, they now have five. And she told me that sometimes during the day, they get so many calls, they do get backed up 15, 20, 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. And you have to wait. So get on that phone and just sit there and wait and tell them what your problem is. You can call us at Helping Seniors. We'll tell you how to do it. We'll tell you what to do. But we can't make that call for you. You have to make that phone call. And that's what's so darn important because there are so many legal requirements they have to go through. There is help. There is help for you, your loved ones. But we have to know where to start. And there's only one starting point, and that's that number, 407-510-511. Yeah, here's, here's what they suggest. They suggest actually calling 407-514-0011. Uh, 
one nine. And I was going to mention Joe while we were on this. I remember uh, meeting Carla at one of the uh, uh, Brevard Commission on Aging meetings where she'd come to introduce herself, and she mentioned, by the way that they have programs that help people uh, one time kind of help with electricity and, and, and challenges that people may be having at this time. So it's a good number to write down. I'm going to say it again. It's 407-514-0019. That's the number I called, yes. Yeah. So well, we've taken a lot of time to talk about that, folks, but, but it, it's important. And it's just a sad thing, Carrie, that, that there, there are so many dollars out there that are available that don't get spent. And I'm going to tell you a secret. When I was the director of the Alzheimer's program, I got a certain amount of money to take care of people in a daycare. And what I always did was I overspent the money, and I spent the money in 11 months. I was out of money by the 12th month. But that didn't make any difference because I still provided daycare for those people because I always, most of the time, was able to get extra money from the state because in that last month there were so many organizations that ended up with a surplus of funds and they had to spend those dollars in that current fiscal year. So I always got extra money and that's one way when you're a program manager, you have to know how you can make those programs work for you. And I, I, I was really proud of Commissioner Esnardi and Commissioner Pritchett last week when they voted or they made a comment about this, these care dollars and said it was ridiculous for an organization like the... Uh, it was an AARP organization, and we've had them on our radio share. Career Source, mm -hmm. we've had them on the show, and they are getting money to manage the programs. They're getting paid to do a job, and then they get extra money to help people, and they take a percentage of that money to do the job, and the state does it, the the county does it, because the county of, of the money we got from the CARES on a national level was something like one point four uh, million dollars, mm -hmm. or one. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it was more than that. It was one hundred and one hundred and one or one hundred and five million dollars, and they were going to give the. Uh, Housing and Human Services Organization, who's already getting paid to do a job, they were going to give them 400000 off of the top of that money. And these are the $10,000 budget programs. And think about it, folks. That $400,000 at max funding could have funded 40 small businesses in Brevard County, yet they are going to take four hundred thousand out of that to manage the state, and so what I'm trying to figure out how can how can we carry convince our listeners to talk to their commissioner about the things that you and I are talking about right now because it is so important that we take the dollars that are there to help people be used for people and not for overhead expenses. And I think the commissioners are starting to wake up to this. Right. I think that's a, I think that's an important point. You know, one of the reasons why there is such a need for what we do as an organization is helping seniors at Brevard is we are sort of a gap filler. Uh, while we are small enough that by ourselves, we're not really a resource for anybody on any kind of a financial level, we are an excellent resource because we know where to go to find programs that do exist. And that's one of the problems that if you're, if you're a senior in our county, uh, you may not know of a service that could be available to you uh, that might resolve a situation that you're facing. And so one of the things that's so important is 
government entities love to shovel money around and say, oh, well, we put this much money into this program. It's fine, but if nobody knows that it's available for them, then it doesn't actually help. And then just the point that you raise is, is there a lot of unnecessary spending going on because of, you know, management fees and all kinds of things like that? We, um, as you know, are a lean and mean organization and spend our time really talking directly to seniors in Brevard County. And uh, between you and Kim, you've really come up with a list of who to call, when to call, for what situation. And I'm always surprised at how effective we're able to be just on our level. But I just imagine if we weren't in place to be able to uh, to be that connector, uh, a lot of those programs would, would get wasted. I remember at that uh, Brevard Commission on Aging meeting, uh, Carla was explaining that they really need help to let people know that the money is available to help with power bills. Because I guess I guess it's a little bit like you explained, Joe. If they get down to the end of the year and then they still have that money, it it goes away. Or worse yet, like you've talked about before, with the Sadowski fund, it gets repurposed into something else. Yeah, but you know we know somebody. We got we owe somebody an apology, Carrie. You and I got off on a tangent. Lee, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Lee, I, I, I apologize, Lee. I forgot all about you. Lee, you sitting there. Folks, the third part of the of the show today is Dr. Lee Sheldon. Uh, um, Lee is a periodontist, and he's been with me so long. I just thought he maybe he was sitting on my back in my backpack, and I was going to keep him there for the show today. And uh, I apologize, <laughs> Lee. No problem. What? No Lee? problem. He gave me a chance to eat lunch. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> What what do you what do you, Lee? Have you got any comments you want to make of what what uh, Carrie and I are waxing eloquently here about? Not not a, not one. No. <laughs> well, folks, I hear uh, laughing in the background. Is that John? <laughs> that would be Terry. <laughs> <laughs> folks, Terry, hi Terry. Hi. Terry, I miss your support. Thank you for supporting me from the background. Well, folks, what we were going to talk about today before I got off on that tangent about uh, how we spend our money wisely, um, Dr. Sheldon, I asked Lee what he wanted to talk about today on the show, and he talked about, he wants to talk about the same thing that I'm writing an article for to, for Hometown News, is something I've been writing out, uh, writing now about for about uh, 15, 16 years, and it's the subject of... Uh, Pain control, pain management, and uh, Dr. Sheldon, how about you giving us a uh, a little bit about your thoughts on uh, pain management in general and uh, what you wanted to talk about today. And, and Carrie and I will listen to you, and then we'll, we'll work in and interrupt you. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it, this is this came up because of an article that I wrote for for my profession. Um, I've written a couple of articles, and I'm kind of a weirdo when it comes to this kind of stuff, but so what? Um, it works. Um, and, of course, for me, it's facial pain, because that's what I see. I, I, uh, um, and uh, there are many people who come into our office saying they have some kind of facial pain. And in the past two weeks, I had two of them. Um, one wanted to drive all the way down to me from Jacksonville, because she had gone to everybody that she could think of, and her problem was a bite problem. And she said, I've gotten my bite problem. I went through braces twice. I had my bite adjusted once, and still every time I bite down, I'm biting down on two teeth on the right side, and that's all that's hitting. And, you know, so I, uh, I was interested, so we did a Zoom call together. You know, these Zoom calls together are good because then I can do do it on video. I said, show me. Show me what's going on. So she showed me. Sure enough, she showed me where it hurt and where she was biting down. I had her, okay, I want you to push here and push there. So she pushed here, and she said, this is the spot that hurts. And the spot was in the middle of her jaw next to her chin. I said, all right. Uh, have you ever had any big problems there? you had major dentistry there, done there? No, I've had my bite adjusted twice. I said, I want you to push on your neck on that side. 
So she put her start on her neck at that side, the, where her neck joined her shoulder in the C7 areas, the seventh cervical vertebrae. I'm able to direct her. And she said, you know, when I push there, I get the same pain in my jaw. So what do you think the pain in her jaw was coming from? It's coming from her neck. Mm. And so I set her up with a chiropractor in Jacksonville. And she's seeing the chiropractor. In Jacksonville. She may have to come down to see me because there's some things that just haven't succeeded and she wants to, to see me. But right now, it's go to the chiropractor. That chiropractor will take care of your facial pain. And what's interesting is the chiropractor will take care of the bite problem as well simply by going to the source of the problem, which is the neck. And I've seen this happen lots of times before. So that's one. Second one happened about a week later. And this patient walks in and she says, I've got pain around my implant. Of course, I didn't do this implant, uh, <laughs> but anyway, I've got pain around my implant. And her implant was also on the lower right side in the back. And so I looked at the x-rays, everything looks beautiful. I look in the mouth, everything looks fine. She said, oh, yeah, I said, point to where the pain is. And she points to where the pain is, and she's on the side of her jaw by the implant. I said, put my finger there so I can see where the pain is. And sure enough, it was in, inside next to the gum tissue, and she was feeling pain there, and I saw nothing there. And I said, let me touch your neck. So I did a palpation examination. And I reached in the same area on the right side that this patient in Jacksonville had. And she said, you know what? When you pushed my neck there, my pain, it, the pain in my jaw went away. Wow. So that's two. And I see this probably more often than most. We, we tend to think that if there's a pain in the mouth, or if, even if there's a bite problem, that's always coming, that the bite needs to be adjusted. And you know what? Everything is connected. Remember the old, you guys remember this? Remember <laughs> the, the old song, the knee bone's connected to the thigh bone, and thigh bone's connected to the hip bone. You know what I'm mm -hmm, talking about? Mm -hmm. Yep. In fact, Carrie used to play this on Music of Your Life or whatever. That was it. That was Music of Your Life. <laughs> yeah, Lee, you can do anything but sing on the show. That's just, that's one thing you can't do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So anyway, it's just to show that there is a relationship mm -hmm. from one area of the body to the other. I have seen patients with hip problems, and their hip problems uh, by uh, 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 hip problems as a result of the hip being off, then the spine is off. The spine is connected all the way up and down from the bottom up to the top. Muscles may be off, and bite changes as a result. I pulled on a patient's leg, and I've done this several times, where the bite was off. I pulled on the patient's leg, and the bite is normal again. Wow. It just goes to show that there's more than just looking at the specific area. You've got to look at the whole body and kind of figure out what's going on. Uh, I, I, was, I was fortunate. I was trained by a lot of good people outside of dentistry. Um, very early in my career, so uh, I could I could see those relationships, and now of course I try to teach those relationships to other dentists. So Lee, I got I got to break in. We, we're going to have to take our yep. mid-show break, but uh, one of the things that we want to talk about on the other side of the show is this uh, lower back pain. I was very interested in what you wanted to talk about, and since you know my medical problems, let's let's talk about uh, lower back pain as it relates to. Uh, uh, periodontal disease and what you're going to do and if, if my own problem with uh, fibromyalgia and everything because you know how I've been please if you can talk about my condition but you know it so we're just going to take our break folks and I'm going to come back and I think you'll learn something from what Dr. Sheldon is going to tell you so please stay with us take our break now John right now let's get back to more of the show once again here's your host Joe Steckler thank you John and uh, welcome back folks to the second half of the show uh, remember that Helping Seniors is a program designed to inform, educate, and connect seniors, not only just in Brevard County, but uh, for many places in the United States that may have somebody living in Brevard County that needs help. We can connect you to a resource, I'd say 98% of the time, that can help you. 
And that's so important because we work mostly with seniors, so we know what is going on with seniors. And uh, in that article I talked earlier about in Hometown News by uh, Brittany Mulligan, uh, she, she she talked about uh, this Carla from Senior Resource Alliance that talked about uh, how they know the problems and they can, they can direct you to a resource. Well, they have four counties they take care of. It's not local. We are a member of a local organization, folks, that is designed to help you. And that's what we do. And if you call our phone number, 473-7770, you can get a hold of our education specialist and she can help you get connected with the help that you need. Now let's get back to Dr. Sheldon and uh, uh, one of the things that uh, Dr. Sheldon wanted to talk about and I sure want to talk about it and uh, Carrie was talking about it with me during a break here in the studio was this business of, of lower back pain, Lee, because more and more people are experiencing it and I know that, that you... And even though you're a heck of a lot younger than I am, you have experienced back pain. And I remember one time you had to take a little time off because you had messed your back up so bad working on people from different angles and everything for protracted, protracted times that you caused yourself to have lower back pain. Remember that? <laughs> I couldn't forget it. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you said that, babe, because, you know, with this business I've had with fibromyalgia for many years, and now for over four years on a couple of knees, uh, I, I, I just can't hardly really stand to walk anymore. And most of the time, my wife pushes me in a transfer chair. But next week, I'm going to, if everything goes right, I'm going to get the first knee operated on, and uh, uh, I'll take it from there. But, uh, yeah, do I mind looking forward to it? No. But I sure as heck know that it, i got to do something to get away from this current pain problem I have. And after all those years, Lee, of, of I t- me talking to you about lower back pain, and for after I had my operation and did some things, a lot of it went away. But I'm going to tell you, for the last three or four days, it's just about put me on the floor again because... It hurts, and it's a type of pain that just doesn't go away, and that's the type of pain you're talking about, correct? Yeah. Now there are. Uh, I'm going to approach it earlier because once you get to the point where you are, Joe, I don't have much to say about that. The surgeon has something to say about that. Uh, perhaps the acupuncturist might have something to say about it, but I don't. Um, we're seeing patients earlier. Um, and, 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 and we get this feeling that back pain is, 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 is something that we need to live with. And I suppose to some degree we do, but part of the re, part of problems in back pain is that we often don't go to the cause of the back pain. And the cause of the back pain, um, for those of you in the audience who listened to your mother who said, who told you to stand up straight, is that our posture is horrible. Mm-hmm. So with a horrible posture, and I'm not talking about you, Joe, we're talking about somebody who's at least a year younger than you are. Um, so we're, t- we're talking about somebody who just sits or stands in the wrong position, and therefore each vertebra, and we have a stack of vertebrae, as most people who are listening to this know, and between the vertebrae there are discs, and outside of the discs, there's soft tissue. And between the vertebrae, there are channels where nerves come out. And, you know, if the vertebrae are related to each other correctly, the discs don't deteriorate, or at least they don't deteriorate as fast. And if you're standing or sitting correctly, then those channels where the nerve is coming out are open rather than closed. But over a period of time, when we're not standing correctly, when we're not sitting to correctly, when we're bending over the wrong way and we don't straight up, we straighten up correctly, which is what I did for my entire career. 
um, then there's a kink in those vertebrae. The vertebrae start to close down and close down the, on the nerves, and the nerves hurt, and that's 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 uh, that's a problem. So one of those things that we can do is to to stand up straight and keep keep our mind on our on our posture. There's a woman um, in Palo Alto, California. <clears throat> Her name is Esther Gokale, G O K H A L E, who specializes in teaching people posture, and she has posture experts all over the country who will give posture classes talking to you about how you can uh, about the cues that you need how you should walk how you should stand and the things that you need to do in order to be able to accomplish correct posture and for many of the people that take those classes their back pain goes away as a result without any other intervention at all well, I was I was interested. In one thing that you uh, were talking about is the darn pain. Now, you also talked about uh, you had a question about uh, um, neck pain and uh, how that's related to your bite. And our, well, I know what it was. It was neck pain and uh, headache. Headache. Yes. And I know that for the last several days I've. I noticed, like, it's not like I grind my teeth, but as I talk to you and try to make my teeth go together, they don't feel like they're meeting right, and I've got a darn headache. Is that the type of thing you were talking about? Yeah, it is. When we were talking about earlier, before the break, yeah, if the back is off, the jaw can be off, and yes, it can produce a headache. No, well, what do you do that about it? All the time, but it happens a lot more often than we think. But what can you do about that, Lee? I think there. You know, there, I work. Um, a, a patients come into me for TMJ problems or facial pain problems. Probably seventy-five percent of the time, I refer them out to a physical therapist or to a chiropractor. I have a favorite physical therapist that I work with, John Ryan. Uh, I have a number of chiropractors who I work with, and. Uh, by the time they get done with those people, I very seldom have to do something in the mouth. Or if I do, it's a very minor thing that I have to do. So um, and there's sometimes when, that, when that's not correct. And, 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 and part of our training is to be able to identify when the bite problem or the head problem is coming from the head or whether it's coming from the back. And, you know, it takes a little bit of, of instruction in order to be able to uh, to learn how to diagnose that, and at least, uh, at least. Well, uh, I know for the years that was a problem. Was correctly. Go ahead. Okay, I, we, I like when you mentioned that we're chiropractic because, for a number of years, my wife and I went to a uh, local chiropractor, and it didn't seem like uh, he was doing a lot, but he had a thing I call it the thumper, where it uh, it bounced parts of your back and. Uh, then he did a thing with my head, where it, 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 and he said other, other chiropractors did not do it. This thing the same way. You got your neck in a certain position and dropped your neck on this uh, on this table. And uh, as I look back now, I think that I felt better in certain parts of my body when I was making those regular visits to the chiropractor. And, and I guess you don't really realize how some of these th seemingly um, uh, unobtrusive uh, procedures can help you until you stop doing it and you get other pains and then you start realizing maybe some of these things that you were doing before that didn't seem like they were very important are important. Can you comment on that? Yeah, I can. Uh, uh, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think there's another thing that we all need to understand, and that is that different chiropractors work in different ways. Uh, somebody told me there are 17 different chiropractic techniques, and then I mentioned that to a chiropractor. He said, are you kidding me? There's more than 30 different chiropractic techniques. Wow. And everyone has their favorite. So... There were times, and there still is, is time, where I will see different chiropractors 
for different things because I know that when I'm feeling one way, I see Dr. X for that, and when I'm feeling another way, I see Dr. Y for that. And, I've, I, and, and by the way, there are a lot of good chiropractors around. Uh, and some people say, well, chiropractor doesn't work. That may not be true. It may be the particular technique that that doctor is using for you may not be your technique, and you have to see somebody else. You know, this whole conversation is is uh, is fascinating for a couple of reasons. Number one, Doctor Sheldon, that the uh, the I was telling Joe during the break that the number one search topic that we see, and I'm for years, we, we've got close to 300 TV shows now, uh, just lots of radio shows, and the number one search word is pain relief. Uh, anytime a show has pain or pain relief in the title. Uh, it, it becomes a, a, an area of an intense interest for a large part of the audience. So I was thinking, I, I wanted to ask this question. If somebody, if, if you were talking to somebody who comes into the office and they say, wow, I'm having all this neck pain, a TMJ kind of pain, and as you sit there and, you, and you're able to rule out maybe, maybe, uh, a large part of it is, is not related to the mouth, but maybe related to some of these other things we've been talking about, how do you... Um, point them in a direction that they're going to be able to sort out, you know, what might be the best next step, step for them. You mentioned physical therapy. You've mentioned acupuncture. You've mentioned chiropractic. What, 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 how would a person research and figure out where they want to go? Yeah, I think it's difficult. And uh, yeah, I have my favorites. So the first thing that I'll ask a patient when I determine that it's not a dental problem, or at least not a problem that we should address first uh, within the mouth I have to ask them, are you comfortable with chiropractic or physical therapy? Some people just have this this bug. They, you know, they've been told for years the chiropractors are blah, 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 whatever that is. Mm -hmm. not true. But, you know, you grow up feeling that way, and therefore you wouldn't have the confidence to see a chiropractor. In that case, then I'll refer to a physical therapist. And I, as I said, I have my favorite. I know the one who's going to produce the results. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and if a person is comfortable with the chiropractor, I also have my favorites there and will make a referral to the chiropractor, meaning I'll send a letter. I'll give them a letter saying, this is what I find. Here's what happened when I palpated in C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, whatever it was, mm -hmm. uh, which, with the, which are the different cervical vertebrae, so that at least the chiropractor will then have a clue as to what occurred, or the physical therapist will have a clue as to what occurred in my office, and then they can... Uh, determine what's what's going to happen from there. With a physical therapist, you cannot see a physical therapist on your own. The physical therapist works technically under the supervision of a physician or a dentist. So I have to make a, a referral and I have to sign off on their diagnosis and treatment plan before a patient can actually have the treatment done. With a chiropractor, a chiropractor can work independently and uh, and determine what he or she needs to do without my necessarily signing off on it. I would just make a referral. Okay. And, you know, that's one of the things that, that, that we had written in some of the notes here is because I think this is fascinating that people may come in and think their pain is coming from one area, and yet it's really coming for, from another. Like you had mentioned low back pain connected to headaches because I guess it would seem like, you know, obviously your spine is connected to your head, but that would seem like something that you might see potentially a chiropractor or a physical therapist about. Yeah, you would carry. It's true, and 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 yet, if you don't think that way, it's it's not something that uh, that would cross your mind. Also, if you take the other end of it, if you're having pain in the back and you have, and let's just assume it's lower back pain and, and isn't related to the head, or you're not getting headaches, but it's just lower back pain. The question that I, will, that I would always have for any individual is, have you exhausted every possibility before going through surgery? Mm -hmm. Because surgery is irreversible. Yet all of these things we talked about, posture techniques, chiropractic, physical therapy, uh, specific exercises that, that you do at home, all of those things are reversible, and you can try a lot of different things before you necessarily... Uh, have to resort to surgery. It's important because I just did a literature review in preparation for something else, not for this show. And you look at the success of low back surgery, it's not that great. You know, it's it's not that predictable. 
And so you really should exhaust every possibility um, conservatively, non-surgically first, before you go, um, before you decide to do something like a fusion or, or, or something along that line. Uh, and these days, there are many more options available because with some of the laser techniques that are available, and particularly some of the diagnosis that we can do now or they can do now, um, they, the, the, the neurologist um, can pinpoint uh, areas of discomfort a lot easier and may be able to help the patient without, um, without, without going to surgery. But if not, then exhaust every, of the poss- every one of the possibilities. Make sure you're going to chiropractic. Make sure one chiropractor doesn't work, go to another one. Uh, go to go to go to physical therapy and and exhaust every one of the possibilities before you go into surgical treatment. Lee, I agree with uh, everything you and Carrie are talking about, except one area. And uh, that? when you talk about exhausting all things before you have surgery, I I yeah. I, I understand that, but. There's there's a there's a little different thought, and uh, sometimes X-rays and uh, MRIs uh, for people who can have them that don't have pay, pacemakers and things like that. You can look at the, let's let's talk just just about a knee, for instance. They can tell from the X-ray whether the arthritic knee has destroyed all the. Uh, the, the the cushions in the in the, between the bones and the knees and you got bone on bone and when you've got that and and you and and doctors that are really trained in this the surgeons that the orthopedic type surgeon they can tell whether or not you're you're, you're able to uh, to, uh, to 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 put off successfully. Um, um, the need for surgery, and then, at some parts of the body you can do that, but other parts of the body you can't do that. And I, I think back in my own condition, if I would have done this surgery maybe six, seven, or eight years ago when I was younger, uh, the outcome could have been better or might be better for me than it will be. And I just can't answer that until I go through it. But I do know that that I cannot stand the pain of these knees being bone on bone when I try to walk because when you can't walk without a walker and I mean putting a lot of the, your weight on a walker and I I had lost something like 20 or 25 pounds and I didn't realize that. I didn't realize it till I got on the scale and saw how much weight I had lost and I hadn't intended it. But a lot of it probably was water weight and a lot more of that can come off of me. But... There's just so many avenues, and if people come to you as a dentist and they say, I've got a pain, heck, you look and see what's causing a pain, and you fix it, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't agree with any, anything you're saying um, <clears throat> when it's gotten to the point of deterioration you're talking about, Joe. Um, I, I would question, however, if um, even in a bone-on-bone situation, that I would question whether other channels have been exhausted first. And I'm not saying saying you yourself, but I also know that in a profession where a lot of surgery is done, I'm talking about in my profession, where there are a number of avenues that we can take non-surgically um, and, and accomplish uh, the same result without, without, without the secondary effects of surgery, because surgery is not just a one-way street. It doesn't get everybody better. The scar tissue develops. There are things that happen during surgery that cannot be reversed. Um, I'm just saying uh, be a little bit more cautious. And I'm not saying for you, you've exhausted every possibility. <clears throat> but um, there's a lot, of, a lot of surgery that's done out there that may not have to be done. Oh, I, okay, I can understand that. Carrie, yeah. Yeah, you know, I was thinking as you guys were talking about this that, that really – uh, Dr. Sheldon, what you're referring to is is something similar to what Joe talks about in an aging plan. It's elements of care. You start with uh, uh, you start with at a certain level, and as you as you maybe have reached the limits of what that's going to be able to do, then you may find yourself having to move to the next level. And to me, that sounds like what you're what you're you're uh, suggesting is that we're going to start with the things that are the least invasive, and then work our way up. 
Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, thank you, Gary. You clarified it better for me than I did for myself. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Uh, we only have a, f- a few minutes left, but there was something that we'd written down that I thought was pretty fascinating. You you also uh, had had some thoughts about digestive pain, and so you know, boy, when people start talking about lower back and just everything down in that general area, sometimes that can morph over into digestive pain. But I don't know if that's where you were going on that. Well, uh, a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, I have a friend who's uh, had digestive pain for a good long period of time. He's also had back pain. And as he's getting his back pain taken care of, his digestive pain is getting better. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, one thing can bleed into the other. One of the most difficult, you know, I'm not an expert on backs. I'm an expert in the, ma- in the mouth. Right. <clears throat> when a patient has a pain in a particular area of the face, and I have to differentiate as to whether it's a muscle, whether it's a lymph node, whether it's a nerve, or whether it's a tooth. Um, and I'm working, and, and all of those are in the same, let's say, square inch. <clears throat> it does take a little bit of diagnosis. Mm-hmm. It takes a little bit of, of weeding out, if you will, before I can really come up with a correct answer. And I think the same thing happens in other parts of the body as well. But Lee, when you when you talk about digestive pain, and you mentioned uh, lymph nodes, uh, what, uh, there are so many parts of the body where you got lymph nodes are contained. But what 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 part of the body, or, or can you uh, uh, relate that that uh, that type of pain to uh, where what part of the body we're talking about the lymph nodes? Oh, well, when I'm talking about it specifically, I'm talking about jaw pain, where you can have an inflamed lymph node as secondary to an infection or just an inflamed lymph node, and it can feel like a toothache. Wow. So you've, you've got to be able to determine whether the tooth is causing that problem or whether it's an isolated problem. You can have uh, another area is sinus pain. All right, mm-hmm. is the sinus pain coming from the tooth, or does a person have a toothache because he or she has a sinus problem? So you've got to, you've got to be able to look at both areas in order to be able to determine what the main source of the problem is. Let's assume a person says, I've got a toothache. All right, what's the answer? You get a root canal done. Well, if the toothache is coming from a bad sinus or from a sinus infection, then, you know, the, the, the root canal may not be, may not be uh, the right answer. At the same time, somebody can have a sinus problem and has a chronic dental infection, and the dental infection causes the sinus problem. Well, there the root canal is the answer to take care of the sinus problem. It's, uh, it's pretty neat. <laughs> you know what I was, as you were talking about that, it, that's really what the value of of having somebody that really knows what they're doing taking a look, right? Because if somebody comes in and, and it's it's just clear cut, well, maybe anybody could do that. But it really seems like one of the real advantages uh, that happens, for example, in your in your office is that you're attuned to all these things and you're uh, able to examine a situation and try to figure out, is this coming from the mouth? Is this coming, being caused by something else? And, well, you know, well, that's really the value that, that it seems that you have to offer to the to the patients as they come in, is that expertise at looking at, at everything that's going on and then zeroing in whether it's going to be something that is mouth-related or, like you said, could be sinus or any other area. You know, it's so interesting, Carrie. You know, uh, people say, I'm going to go to the young doctor because he just graduated from dental school and he's up on all the new techniques. <laughs> or now you're saying, I think I better go to the older doctor who may be able to differentiate and diagnose a little bit better. <laughs> They've so. seen and done it all. <laughs> well, By the you, way, for you, those of you who say going to the young doctor, remember it was one of us who taught that younger doctor. Well, and let's not forget, Dr. Sheldon, that your son, who is a great dentist, was named one of the 40, was it the 40 best under 40 in the country? That's right. So a little competition. (laughs) (laughs) And I can still teach him a thing or two. (laughs) (laughs) Experience, experience makes a difference, Lee, and... I, when I thought about who I was, am I going to get to do my knees, I thought, geez, I, I started and I got different recommendations from people. I'd settle on somebody and somebody would say, no, you want to go to this guy, Joe. And so the thought that came through was that in my area, the surgeons that had performed more of these operations successfully 
was a guy I really wanted to find. And I finally asked a couple of doctors, I said, look, you're telling me to do these things or recommend these things. Who would you go to if you had to have this thing done? And that made him think. And um, then I got a recommendation. Anyway, anyway. Um, it'll be next next week, folks. I have that operation, so uh, uh, I may not be on a radio show. I may be. I, I may not be. I, anyway, Carrie will be. And, yep. uh, <laughs> we'll hold uh, down the fort. <laughs> <laughs> See, Carrie will hold the fort down, and uh, it'll be a good show, I know. And uh, who are we supposed to have? Uh, yeah, next week was Barb McIntyre. Barbara McIntyre. And that's something that we really need to think about is reverse mortgages. And uh, I think Tom Selleck looks good on TV, folks, but Barbara McIntyre knows the local situation and she can help you. So with, with that thought, we're going to wind today's show up. And uh, thank you, Carrie, for being here in the studio. And thank you, Lee, Dr. Sheldon, for being with us. And uh, we'll talk to you, okay? Okay.